All right. I think we're ripping. So before you start ripping this. Yes. I'm just noticing on that box, like something that I've never noticed before, but they're like really going hard on uh, putting on their packaging that they were rated number one in 1984 by the Baseball Hobby News. Definitely. Um, uh, I, you know, honestly, for me, 85 is right when I started opening packs. Right. So, um, but I mean, just looking historically, yeah, I mean, 83 is kind of a dud year as far as, you know, um, you know, their visibility, I mean, you know, their presentation, everything compared to 84, um, the photography and everything just stepped it up. And this takes it up another notch, I think. Um, 85. Well, like the 84 updates that definitely like put them over the top in 84, I would say. Yeah, um, I think so. So, um, so we'll talk as we go because I make really long videos sometimes ah. and um, <laughs> well, uh, we got a lot of cards to go through. So let's rip. And um, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. John D bought the upper left sack. So, um, so jump in anytime you want to. I do have a few questions for you as we go through, but, um, um, but just jump in and uh, this is so exciting. I'm like jealous that I'm not there with you. This is so awesome just to look at. All right, John D. Good luck. We're going to start ripping. Um, I actually um, tried to do a little, and if you can't see something or something, just let me know. But um, I'm going to, yeah, right here should be good. Um, there's only one other box on YouTube of 85 Fleer. Can you believe that? Um, wow. Good luck, John D. Um, there's a lot of individual packs. There's a few rack packs. Um, things like that, but only jabs. And it was only like two weeks ago. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the jabs family. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I watch people opening up uh, vintage wax on YouTube. Believe me. I, I know. I do too. Well, look, Mike Schmidt right out of the gate. Oh, we have that. Um, now look at the top. This must be the very top of the sheet. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a little black line, the there. black lines at the top. I saw this in some of jabs, but, um, but uh, heck of it is the left to right border looks pretty good. Um, but um, anyway, that's our first uh, nice card. Did you, um, did you, so did you watch the 85 Fleer jabs break? I'm not sure if I watched that one specifically, but I've seen them open up boxes before. Uh, I, one, one thing that I noticed that was really weird is um, uh, he had some really miscut cards. And right. they, they were terribly miscut. And every single one, there was, I think there was four of them. Every single one had a replacement for it. The same card. Right oh, wow. It, That's it was really strange. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we'll get that or not. Hopefully we don't get any miscuts. I mean, that, that bad. It was like, you know, you see part of the next card miscut. Um, I've, been, uh, I've been cracking some 1987 Tops wax lately, and there's been some pretty horrendous miscuts in there. Look at that. Nice one. Nice one. And what's really nice is, I don't know if you watched the preview video, okay, but um, there's a lotto in this for if anyone can hit all three Cal Ripken Jr. cards in their stack, then they get a blaster box of 2018 update. Um, wow. Which we rip, which is about the hottest set going right now. Um, so, um, so that's a nice card for uh, Mr. John D. That's uh, the first one that he needs. Mark Langston, rookie. Um, he didn't really pan out, but a um, uh, nice card. Mr. Winfield, nice centering on that, actually. May have killed a, a seagull that season. <laughs> That's right. He, um, that was no joke, actually. Didn't he get actually in really like, in trouble for that? Didn't he have to actually pay a fine? And, um, I think so. I'll have to look into that. Like, I know it was, it, they joke about it now, but I think at the time he actually like, got arrested or you know, detained um, for that. Um, Lance Parrish, pretty nice border on that too. Possible Eric Davis behind there? Possible Eric? Oh, I thought that no, was that, would, that would have been nice. Uh, I know people forget about Eric Davis. Um, Ooh, so we have um, uh, we we have one of the half cards. Um, uh, I was watching. I felt bad for the guy. I was watching another break, and the dude was like, "This card's really miscut. It doesn't even have the border." And it was Willie Upshaw, and I'm like, "No, dude, there's another half to the card." I, you know, but. Uh, um, so I forget who is the other half to this one. Um, I think well, it's, I don't even remember. I swear I have no memory of these like half cards. That's so there's cool. half cards. There's two of them. Hopefully we'll hit the other half and we'll be able to, to see that. But anyway, I'll, I'll set that to the side. Um, one of them, uh, 
the other guy is, is not um, famous either, though. Um, like, he's, he's kind of a common. I forget exactly why. Um, but there's definitely another guy. To, and there's two Blue Jays, actually, on another one, I think. I think Jesse Barfield's one of them, um, yeah. if I remember Willie right. Willie Upshaw, so, that would make sense. Willie Upshaw, yeah. Um, so he won a dozen games, two seasons. Anyway, in the last see, two um, that's like a dozen games total in the last two seasons. <laughs> Why did he get a half card to himself? For, who's, he, who's he sleeping with at clear? Worked out. I mean, 146 batters in two seasons. I mean, yeah, congratulations on the major leagues, but I don't know why he gets a, a super special card. I'm with you on that one. Um, and uh, we'll sleeve this Ripken, but a pretty good start as far as the lotto goes for John D. He's got to hit um, – so he's got to hit the Ripken in action, and he's got to hit the, you know, the, the standard Ripken card now um, for the lotto. So I set up these weird lottos, and you can't say anything about it in eBay because it's – so it's just technically – you know, channel giveaway, like a fun thing for the channel. Um, uh, so there's our first, uh, the rookies. That's actually was a hot card back then. Um, Sean Dunstan. Um, was a, and uh, Billy Hatcher, who moved to the Astros the next year because um, he had those clutch hits against the Mets in the championship series. Wow, that's a nice, wow, one. That's a nice one. Yeah. yeah. Um, not anymore, but it was back then, um, for sure. I remember, like, Sean Dunstan had, like, a weird rookie variation in 85 tops. Oh, look at that. Danny Tartable. Tartable rookie. This is a nice rookie pack. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that's Tartable. Um, Tartable had an amazing – well, both those guys. Sean Dunstan, I know, had the best arm in baseball. Um, uh, I think they did some, something at the All-Star break or something. Like a – there's a nice Paul Molitor. But uh, Tartable had an amazing arm, too. He started out as a shortstop and moved to right field. Um, Franklin Subs, pretty good player back in the day. Well, Eric Davis coming. Nope. <laughs> no, I see the left, the left leg. Um, it's just a picture of him straight up. Uh, Howard Johnson, 30-30. Yeah, Hojo. Nice, uh, nice border on the Hojo. So, uh, that a, a couple of these rookies. That might be a rookie card, that Howard Johnson. Is it? It might be, actually. I think you might be right. Oh, Joe. <laughs> Kevin McReynolds, 84 clear. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but it just reminded me of it. Kevin McReynolds moved to the Mets. Um, so did Howard Johnson. Um, all right. So uh, John D, um, some, some pretty good action in, in his stack so far. We don't have our big hits, but um, did you, oh, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it because you haven't seen the jabs box. But um, oh, there's the Schmidt in action. He wants the, uh, the Ripken in action. But uh, still, the in action cards are really cool. Andujar. Uh, fun fact about that Gary Pettis card. That's the only 1985 uh, Gary Pettis with him actually on the card, perhaps. Because the 85 tops, it's not him in the picture. I didn't know that. Who is it? Is it it's just a teammate? That like, they, they got His brother or his cousin or something. <laughs> kind of like a Barry Bonds, Johnny Ray? Thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, wow. That's hilarious. His cousin. <laughs> That's great. Ojeda, I think he led the league in shutouts this year, if I remember right. Goose Gossage and Greg Walker. All right, John D. We're about halfway through for John D. Checklist. Sometimes that's an omen that you have some good stuff coming. There's a Lee Smith. Joe Beckwith. Ron Darling. Rusty K. Ooh. Yeah, we, we pull a Rusty K in almost every break. Um, he's almost like our John Wathen um, for the Jabs channel. We used, uh, to call, <laughs> we used to call that the K word. Right, exactly. Um, and the heck of it is we had a – I don't know if you've seen on, on eBay, there's a couple guys that have Rusty K, like PSA Jim Mint cards listed for like thousands of dollars. Right. There's an 85 tops that's listed for like seven grand or something. Um, so I, in one of our breaks, we hit, like, one that was perfect. And I was like, dude, like, you know, Tulip Mania, put it on there right next to this guy for $1,000 less. Um, it was obviously a goof, but I was like, you know, be part of the goof. Ever, do people ever accidentally, like, buy those? I don't know. I, I know that that um, – who was it with the Fleer? Um, uh, Juan Uribe or Jose Uribe? 
yes, your re, your rebate. I know that that cooled off, but there were a lot of completed sales in the hundreds of dollars for that card over that nonsense. Um, and there's a Rob Deere Sanchez Ooh, strikeout or 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 hit a home run, Rob Deere, <laughs> right? I love yeah, there were a few, him. A few guys like that back in the day, Bobby Brown. Actually, our friend uh, Corey Snyder was like that too. Yeah, Corey Snyder, Pete Incavilia, Steve yes. Bye Bye Balboni. Balboni, yes, he was. Yeah, I, I was just thinking of him. He's uh, he's another uh, Jeff, one that comes to Jeff, mind. Jeffrey Leonard, the Hackman. <laughs> right, Sammy Stewart. All right, we we need to get something a little warmer for uh, for John D. He started off kind of hot, and I like to see a Kirby Puckett or something. A Puckett um, and a Clemens are obviously our. Good in best cards. Dave Goodin's Kingman. Inter- Eric Davis, Dwight Gooden. Uh, I think there's like Glenn Davis or something. If my memory serves me correctly. Glenn Davis was a was a pretty good slugger for a couple of years yeah, there. Yeah, like, like 30 home runs. Yeah, and 100 ribbies um, for sure. Um, I remember that you know that year of the Astros where they they really should have been in the World Series except for the, all the Mets miracles that they had um, in '86. But yeah, I mean, for me, the the Dwight Gooden card is is still the card to hit. Um, it's yeah. just I, I just just because I remember it back in the day as being the hot card. It's when I started collecting, you know. All right, last pack for John D. It's crazy because Puckett is the only one who's in the Hall of Fame from that whole crew. <laughs> right, right, and is um, well, I mean, Clemens. I mean, they have to put Clemens in there. You would think. Um, I don't think uh, it's gonna happen. No, just because of the PEDs, really. I mean, how many Cy Youngs? I mean, it's, I don't know. At some point, you know. Pete Rose has the most hits in the history of baseball. That'll never be passed. Brooke Jacoby. <laughs> Brooke Jacoby, for sure. All right. Well, we kind of, we started off pretty hot, um, Alfredo Griffin. And um, we kind of ended with a fizzle for John D. But um, uh, we, hit, we got to see. Any Tartable looks He's it's actually, um, yeah, you're not joking. Actually, the the border, oops, sorry, um, the border uh, looks pretty darn good on that. Yeah, I told a story in one of my other breaks about. Um, we'll move on to the next guy. Um, uh, Tartable, when he was playing with the Royals at um, Roger M. Upper right at uh, Boardwalk and Baseball, um, he just kind of was hanging out, right, you know, warming up in between innings, and. Um, took a ball right at the warning track and just winged it to third base. And I remember being like, you know, 11 years old and just looking at that ball, go all the way to third base and take like a one hop right before it got there. And I think, I don't think the ball ever got more than 10 feet off the ground. And I'm just like, that is unbelievable. It like defied gravity. I'm like, that's, that's a major leaguer's arm right there. You know, you just, it's one of those things that, you know, you play little league and all this, and then you go out and you see baseball in person and then you just stand right next to a guy and watch him throw it like, you know, 300 feet like that. And it's just amazing. But that Royals team was awesome. Anyway, Bo Jackson, Danny Tartable. Come on, so there he is. Great. Oh, look at that. Holy. Look that's at that. The other, that's the other half to. So can um, we put it together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, absolutely. I saved it. Um, uh, where's he at? John D's. We don't want to get John D's confused, but um, <laughs> they could go half on this one. Look at that! Right? That's amazing. That might be the most pointless half card. <laughs> that's amazing. Holland Tunnel. I get it. Oh, that, that's what they were doing. Okay, now it makes sense. All of that for like a pun. The more intimidating pitchers in the National League. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's hilarious. Um, so yeah, we hit. Um, you know what? I should have made that part of the um, the lotto to, to hit the hit the double up on the. Uh, well, you know, it's Ripken now, but we'll do that if we ever do another one. We'll we'll see if you can put together both of the because um, I think there's one other one also. Um, Look, that guy looks like uh, he he doesn't take uh, any any guff from anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Al Holland. Uh, so uh, rock rains. Rock. Uh, we got the we got the black lines at the top again. Uh, the whole way across. Um, and uh, Schmidt and Sandberg, nice card. And a pitcher's nightmare. Gubisa. That's his rookie. Gubisa rookie. Yeah, absolutely. 
Mr. October? Definitely sleeve that. <laughs> it's yeah. funny. Reggie Jackson looks like he's about 100 years old in that picture. And it's like today you don't even see players, you know, maybe one or two guys in the league. But when we were kids, there were all sorts of veterans like that playing. Oh, my God. I mean, like, like the Negroes looked like my grandpa like yeah. when they were playing. Like, they were still striking guys out. And, they, you know, they were only in their 40s. But it's like, you know, people, guys let their like, hair grow out. Yeah. There's no, you know – Male grooming, you know, you didn't color your hair back then. You just aged normally. <laughs> this is going to be a good pack. Well, we don't have the black <laughs> line, so it's a better pack. Uh, Amade Jesus, Benedict, Rich Gedman. Uh -huh. Oh, we got another good. Red Sox. Yeah. It Here it comes. No. no. It's Tony Armas. Senior. Senior, yes. He, uh, what's the year he had all those home? He had an, a, a crazy amount of home runs one year. Um, which, we, which year was it? Uh, it was, it was 84. Okay. Yeah. Going into this year, um, 43, um, in the dead ball era. That's, um, he had, and he had 36 in 83. Um, in 35, he had a bunch of, a bunch of big years, Tony Armas. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Steve Garvey, Steve Garvey had uh, more kids than hits and he had a lot of hits. <laughs> Diddy, I didn't keep up with that. Harold Baines, Hall of yeah, Fame. Of, yeah, Hall of Famer by committee now, but um, that's a heck of a nice uh, border on that, actually. With the Ken Griffey Jr. pose. Yeah, it is actually nice. Speaking of which, I have those boxes in, um, so we're gonna um, uh, we're definitely gonna do. Um, I heard you in another interview talk about how you have like some untold stories about upper deck or something so don't say anything about it now but um i want to do an upper deck upper deck break and i have two um sealed seal boxes a high and a low from wow. a seal case so that sounds, that sounds like fun i mean so that's that's what i mean like so we'll do like we'll, we'll do like some upper deck talk um d during that one that'll be a lot the reason i really want to do is because we did an upper deck box high series from a seal case sealed and we did not hit the griffey so Anytime I don't hit the chase card, I really want to, you know, redo the break somehow. So, Black, oh. oh, there you go. Nice. Nice card, too. Heck of a, a nice border on it. I don't know if it's absolutely perfect, but um, nice corners. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to one-touch one that because that is um, – that's possibly gradable. Um, you pulled that card from – to 1991 you would have been very happy <laughs> absolutely and there's look uh there's the other half of that um oh yes it's lloyd mosley so i said jesse barfield it's lloyd mosley i was doing it from memory um, the shaker look at that so there's our first big rookie um i need to set up a um better backdrop real quick got his buddy strawberry in the background there and a possibly a Gooden next to him. What back there? That's Strawberry and Gooden? Yes. Um, those are um, the, the, the Gooden is uh, – I'm going to set up this as a little backdrop. Um, uh, the Gooden is the update card. Um, 84 tops update? Yes. Um, I, yeah. uh, when I was a kid, I don't remember what year. Probably like 87 um, or so. But I remember going to a card show and seeing that card under glass. And I don't remember the price. I just remember thinking, I'll never own that card. I'll never. I mean, I think it was like a couple hundred dollars, um, you know, at its peak, you know, and like make it. And, it, and I just remember thinking, I'll never own that card. So I actually. Oh. oh, wow. In the same pack. In the same pack. All right. So wow, um, that's cool. That's really cool. And I got to make sure not mix mix up these cards. So we put those together. That's absolutely really cool. What a what a wow. That's so a Willie pack. Upshaw and Lloyd Mosby. Scoot Doc out of the way. We can do the double card. So maybe, um, maybe that's not a great lotto. Um, <laughs> we might, In we might the same pack, I probably paid ten to one. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, exactly, right. Uh, and well, it's Jim Clancy and uh, Fernando, Fernando Valenzuela. Wow, that's really really cool. I recently discovered uh, a, an eighty-five Don Ross. Uh, Quite good in that I never, which like the box 
on the box of 85 Donruss, they have like cards you can cut out and there's a good in on there. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, like in the bleachers at, at, or something like that. It's like a different, what's that there? What you got? Joel, Joel Skinner, Skinner and Jose Roman. Joel Skinner, I believe, ended up on the Indians. Did he? I don't know what happened with Jose Roman. <laughs> Ken Phelps, Mr. Total Average Leader back then. I don't know if you remember. Um, I forget. I think it used to be like Sporting News used to come out with Total Average. And you never really heard about Ken Phelps too much until that Total Average issue. And he was like the Total Average, like, you know, leader for like two or three years in a row. Speaking of Grandpa. Look at that. <laughs> that's and hilarious. He- him and Reggie played like three more seasons after this. <laughs> it looks like an old timers game. That's hilarious. Like, like Reggie Jackson has an eighty nine upper deck card. <laughs> that's absolutely hilarious. Oh, that's great. Willie Hernandez and Guillermo Ted Bauer. Hernandez. Guillermo. He changed his name, if you recall. Later Did he? Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that. Guillermo. All right, Carlos Diaz, Tibbs, Dave Parker, nice slugger for a while, Kuzman, Keith Hernandez. Ooh. Have you, now, have you ever watched, uh, there's a Keith Hernandez 20-minute documentary, there's Pat Tabler, uh, called uh, I Am Keith Hernandez. You have to watch it. It's crazy. I have not seen that. That it's does sound a, good. It's like, it's like sort of like a tongue-in-cheek 30 for 30 about Keith Hernandez. It's, you can watch it at com. I think. It's really, really funny. It's kind of uh, R-rated, though, so uh, not safe for work. <laughs> is, is it, like, recent? Like It's, like, from, like, the last, I don't know, 10 years. There's the kid. Gary Carter has an expo. Still doesn't seem right seeing him wear anything but a Met uniform, just because that's when I remember him. But, you know, he he was Met and then an, an Indian. He, like, he, was, he, was, he, he got around after that. Um, there's Jesse there, Barfield. We talked about him earlier. That's a nice picture. Dale Kendo, Sid Fernandez, oh, Sid, Beniquez, and David Green. All right. I think I may have made the, uh, the lotto too difficult, though, this time. <laughs> we only have one Ripken card in the stack well, how and about a half. If, so. How about if nobody hits it, I just win it? Right? Maybe if we um, – maybe I should – well, it's too late to change it. I was going to say uh, – I'll just have to keep that in mind for next time. Because I was going to say maybe, maybe like two Ripkins. Um, uh, would be good for the Dave Dravecki. We make a joke. We hit Dravecki in every break. Um, of course, he has that sad story, but yeah. um, we, we, uh, we hit him in every break. Every single break, we hit Dravecki. Pally Rulo. Oh, all we got to do is just talk about him, and they'll show up. So maybe this, maybe he could get really, really hot here and get uh, <laughs> yeah. hey, all three Verkins. Ryan Sandberg. Nice. We just, uh, we just posted a Sandberg today on our uh, Instagram. With the serial killer eyes on his 88 Donalots. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I love your Instagram, by the way. Thanks, man. The, the only time you lose me Jays, is... Uh, is... Puzzle is... What's that? I'm sorry? The Blue Jays, uh, that, I can't believe you got that in the same pack. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. So, so we've, hit, we've hit all... I think we've hit both double cards. We hit the Holland and Tunnel... <laughs> and then we hit uh, Upshaw and Mosby. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, I should have made that our lotto. And then we'd, we'd have some happy campers right now. Of Next Hawkins, time. Of, of the four players featured in the double cards, it's like, I think, is Lloyd Mosby the best player there? Yeah. And, and Willie Upshaw was okay, too, I think. But the other two guys, I mean. <laughs> they were just intimidating. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. That centering even looks good. Wow. I got to say. I'm looking at the corners. The corners look good. The lower left, I'm not sure if the cut is absolutely immaculate, but I tell you what, I'm definitely going to one-touch that um, really quick. That is sharp. And I don't want to say um, anything else, but I will after this pack um, about the jab spring. But let me go ahead and one-touch How this How about really Roger quick. M picking up the Gooden and the Clemens? Roger M is, um, is taking over this break. Um, for sure. Love those one touches. That's really cool. Nice one, man. Wow, that is a nice card. I mean, that's gradable. I think. I really think so. I mean, I was, you know, it. I don't know that they're. Um, 
Yeah, because I was holding against another card, but looks good to me. Know. It's at least it's, a, a could be an eight or a nine. Heck, of it is. I didn't even turn it over, but um, centering on the back looks pretty good too. Sorry, I'm holding, <laughs> holding a little off. I'm looking at it in person, not not through the lens, but uh, that's nice. Like without grading or grading, just to have those cards in your collection is really cool. And just to know that they were, you know, pack fresh. Only you've pulled them and touched them, and it's pretty cool. These guys. Oh, uh, that guy, Greg Lazinski. Greg Lazinski's got. Oh, Puckett, he got also. Oh. I was gonna say, okay, oh. in in the jabs break. What? Hit Clemens and Puckett in the same pack, and I, that's what I was gonna say. Wow. I'll say it after this pack. Um, that is pack. crazy. That is crazy. What a stack. What a pack. That might be that, the best 85 clear pack you could possibly pull. The Clemens and the Pucket are the two best cards in the set, and you've got them in the same pack. All right. Am I swinging and missing on uh, – got to get a one-touch. Uh, I think everybody else can just go home. <laughs> right. Roger M. just closed shop. Roger M. Uh, are these? That's yeah. Right. Okay. That's got to be the best possible 85 video pack you could possibly open. <laughs> it's hilarious because, uh, like I said, um, that's exactly what happened in Jabs. So um, that must be the run. That's the run, man. Um, so now we know. Um, that's awesome. And the you other should thing remember I can... those cards. Like whatever else was in that pack, you should like catalog that. If the you other see thing those... I can say now is I can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because this was an, a non-authenticated box, and um, we saved a little wow. bit of money on this. Uh, this wasn't like a three hundred dollar box or anything. It was less than two hundred bucks. So, and I just charged at cost. So Roger M is is loving this break for sure. He's Look getting his value in this time. He got Gooden. <laughs> and... He got all three. That should have been the, that should have been the uh, the lotto. And I, I would thought that would have been too hard to hit, that the Ripken was easier to hit. If Eddie he, Murray? If he pulls a, uh, an Eric Davis in the next pack, that's like a kick in the nuts. <laughs> he's, just, he's just lording it over everyone and rubbing it in, isn't he, at this point? That is unbelievable. How much did that one corner cost him? Uh, 45 bucks. It was that's 180 bucks for the box. So, that's yeah. a steal. He just robbed and that, he robbed that listen, box. If that... Uh, Clemens itself could be over a hundred dollar card just just set by itself. Um, if it grades to a, a, a gem mint, it's over two hundred, I think. That's a Jimmy Key rookie card. It is actually. Um, yeah, he was good. Not too bad. A little off cut, but I'll definitely sleeve that. That's what you're here for. Grab grab me on if I. Uh, Mike Scott, pretty good. Uh, he was Cy Young the next year. He could pitch. He, yeah, he learned how to uh, scuff the ball. And uh, Juan Samuel. Yeah, he was pretty good for a minute. Yeah, like literally a minute. Wasn't, wasn't it this year or the year before? Um, yeah, this year. Check it out. Or 84. Um, 191 hits, 105 runs. Wow. 72 okay. stolen bases. That was crazy. That's that era. What was going on, man? Everybody was stealing like 70, 100 bases, 80 bases. It's like you don't see that anymore. You had to manufacture runs back then. And Gerald Perry rounds it out. So Roger, Roger M's stack was off the charts. Yeah, absolutely. Roger M, that's the best outcome you could have asked for. Like you literally got everything. <laughs> Oh wow! Look at all. Look at his one touches. We're all out of one touches, guys. Sorry. Go home. Um, and and if he's a Blue Jays fan, he got every Blue Jays hit you could possibly want. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the double card, the Jimmy Key rookie, uh, everyone. So, uh, all right. So Danny R, lower left. Hopefully we didn't use up all the all the luck, Danny R. Danny R is a uh, Mets fan. Um, Danny R's bought into a few breaks. He actually donated a box to us that we. Uh, broke for charity um, for Hurricane Dorian relief. So uh, Danny R is a nice friend of the channel and a good guy. Hopefully we're going to hit him some, some good stuff here. Um, good luck. Oh, we haven't seen this card yet. NL there All-Stars. Is a, there's a Met. Yeah, there's one Met anyway, and two Mets actually um, uh, with the Carter yeah. next year. Garvey and Smith. Cool card. We haven't seen that yet. Boy, Mosby and his real card. 
Tug McGraw. Fred Lynn. Tug McGraw, the father of uh, country superstar Tim McGraw. You know, that's right. I completely forgot about that. Um, I, might have been, I might be making that up. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Um, I, I seem to remember hearing that somewhere. Yeah, I, I completely I, forgot about that. You're right. Yeah. I think they were actually, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. They were estranged, and I think they kind of got back together. Um, you may know something about that, um, that, yeah, that, that there story. You go. There you go. Tug of all For, trades. <laughs> Jack Bo Morris? Bad, bad Bo Diaz, sad story about him. I think he died like when a satellite dish fell on him, like he was like putting up a satellite dish on his house. Oh, you might really? I might be wrong, but that's, I was right about the, uh, I was right about Tug, so. You <laughs> were right about Tug McGraw. I'm, I mean, I think you just sparked a memory. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's the case, that it is, and they did not talk for a long, long time, and they got reacquainted recently, so. Um, you think they opened right, so... a box of 86 Don Ross together? <laughs> right. <laughs> By the way, did you hear my suggestion? Um, if you guys ever do, like, a Blu-ray um, you have oh, to like the whole, the whole, the whole break. Yeah. Yeah. That'd break. be cool. Also, there's, there's other stuff like when I, you know, I was with him for about two hours, you saw 15 minutes of it, but there was a lot of baseball card talk where I was like showing him a lot of different cards and he had really cool stuff to say about a lot of them. So maybe there is something there, but, uh, for sure. I mean, um, uh, I dug it when he was like, cause I don't know how far you guys got into the box, but, he, he he started knew. going like it's yeah, not knew. gonna happen. Yeah, he knew. Uh, just right. He just knew from like intuition or opening, like you said, you guys used to open just hundreds of packs back in the day. Yeah, and you maybe you just start to know after a while. Maybe eighty nine Fleer was uh, like people used to get fired from my dad's stores because like the employees like knew where the Griffies were, and we'd like my dad would fire them because he would catch them like taking the packs. Kirk Gibson, he had a good year. Uh, Look at with without facial hair. Yeah. When does that ever happen? Yeah, that's crazy. That's funny. Is it true about the well? We don't want to talk too much about upper deck. Is it true that you could do it with upper deck too? You could open a couple packs and then know what was coming in the stack. I, I, I don't have a memory of that specifically, but there are people who claim it, and I've seen you know stuff you've probably seen. On this yeah, that's all I've seen is just I, anecdotal I, evidence. Yeah, but uh, in preparation for us doing our upper deck break together. I will ask Tom Guideman if that's true, and he'll tell me. All right, there's a major league prospect, uh, Zane Smith and Zuvella. Dave Stewart, he's a mean pitcher for a while. No one's more intimidating than him when you're, uh, when you're in the playoffs and he's in the Oakland A's. Yeah, he was brutal. Um, he was a big part of their success, late 80s, um, 20 wins. Uh, probably should have won Cy Young. I, you know, as a kid, like Dennis Eckersley, you think of as like the best closer of our era, or at least, you know, in the conversation, but probably number one of like our era, right? But sure. Now I'm watching, you know, he gave, he, he gave up the home run to Kirk Gibson, and he gave up the home run to Roberto Alomar that eliminated them in, uh, <laughs> right. in 92. So it's like... As long as it's not your biggest moment, then yeah. Um. <laughs> Donnie Moore. Donnie Moore? Uh, Lamar Hoyt, he won the uh, Cy Young the year prior, didn't he? Did he? Or the year prior before that? He was a Cy Young winner. Yeah, 24 and 10. That'll probably do it. Uh, 83 probably. You're right. You're probably right. Yeah, heck yeah. One of those guys that you know gets, a, gets an award, moves on, and you kind of forget about him. You got to... One of those guys, like when you buy those like mystery autograph balls that promise you like Cy Young winners, you pull like Lamar Hoyt. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right, Danny R. We're about halfway through, and uh, we have some Mets. We don't have. We can start talking about guys we haven't seen now. We haven't seen like we haven't seen the Mattingly card. We haven't seen those, Nolan Ryan. Uh, do those Fleer stickers always have numbers on them? Like who's number twenty three on the Expos? I don't know. Is it Tim Raines? Is it like their, their most popular player? I don't know. I don't know. I never noticed. Is there, I didn't notice there was like numbers on the other ones. Interesting. 
You know, I've seen, I, there's definitely ones that aren't. Because I remember the Mariners one just said Mariners. And I remember thinking how it looked really plain. So we'll have to watch for that. That's, I'll, go, that's, I'll Google right now. Bly Levin, Hall of Famer. Wicked curveball uh, for a long time. Um, Garvey and Gossage, pennant clinchers. Don Sutton, Hall of Famer. Ripken in action. All right, well. We might complete the Ripken no. lotto in the entire box. <laughs> Wisenberry, Schofield, and Cox. Uh, yeah, number I made 20, the... This is so bizarre. Number 23 for the Expos in 1984 was Doug Flynn. Like, who? I don't even know who that is. Let me try 1985. That's really weird. Why would they do it? We'll have to watch for that now. Well, of course, this is just a... We don't have a jersey, just a nice Pirates logo, but uh, we'll watch for that now in the next uh, the next stack. To the bass. Robinson and Bilecki. Yeah, Doug Flynn and Mitch Webster are like the notable players to wear that number. It's like really weird. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there's a Flynn sticker for any Flynn collectors out there in case his family's watching. <laughs> right. Yeah, we'll have to watch for that now because I'm pretty sure that they weren't having numbers on them. Um, this wax stuck to the card just a little bit. It's a Mike Fitzgerald. So this one has no number. Yeah, see? I don't know that any of them had, have had numbers. That's a good eye, Stu. Uh, I, I, honestly, we'll have to watch for that now. I don't know if any others have had numbers. At all. But oh, there's the Mattingly. Ooh. ooh. That's nice. Nice condition, too. I think the border's pretty darn good. Is it like, just a little top to bottom, maybe? Just maybe? I was like, a I don't know. that's like a $15 card in 87. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, definitely sleeve that. It's Danny R's first big hit. I know Danny R would love like a really nice strawberry or good and last yeah, pack. Uh, thing that a Mets fan wants more than a. Don Mattingly card. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, final pack for Danny R. Good luck, Danny R. He's going to hit something here. Come on, man. Well, we got a Wally Backlund on the back. On the back, There you man. go. Asking you shall receive. Right on the back, man. I like it. I see what you did there. <laughs> right. A little cheesy, but. <laughs> well, you got no number again. I'm watching for that now. Don Baylor. What's uh, what's he famous for other than you know being a pretty good slugger in DH? You tell me. Most hit by pitches. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. But like year in year, yeah, year there's out. There's actually a card of him in like '86, like that says "ouch." That's how I know. Yes, yeah. we, we we pulled that in our '86 Fleer break, and that's how I know. Um, I'm all like lording over the the you know the trivia now, but I just learned in our. Last a little part. impressed that I remember. There it is. Nice. There it is. Are you a little impressed that I remember that ouch card? Yes, absolutely. Um, That's a sick uh, Eric Davis. Centering's a little, mm -hmm, but still, it's Eric Davis. It's a, it, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's 70-30 left to he's right. But, um, he's got a cheek full of chew. Pete Rose? Yeah, there you go. It's always nice getting the, the box card, um, you know, that's the highlight, of, you know, the, the show card of the box. Let's leave both of those. Steve Baboni, we talked about him earlier. Yeah. I and think the Eric Davis was like a nice, uh, like, Hail Mary for him on that last pack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll see both of these. And um, not too bad. He, he's, he, you know, he got the Ripken in action, the matting. I bet you if you, uh, if you one touch the Eric Davis, he'll, he'll probably psychologically feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah, except for, um, uh, I think Roger M took all the one touches. Uh, no, I do have, I have one left. Um, if it wasn't, um, if it wasn't uh, off center, off center, I would definitely want to touch that for him because I actually I think the the corners and everything are pretty darn good. I'll definitely top load that for him um, when I go to send it. So pretty good stack, Danny R. It's not you know it's not Roger M stack, but um, I don't think anybody's can, Roger M stack might be the best stack in the history of <laughs> eighty five <85 laughs> flare, eighty five eighty five flare breaks. I know. Like your like uh, description in the YouTube can be like the best row in the history, you know, like, the best packet in the history. Open, you'll get a lot of views. 
Corbin Thomas, Jim Rice, Wade Boggs. Nice. We haven't seen that one. A little off cut, nice. but um, got to watch where I'm holding him. Nice card. I think he won the batting title in 84. And 85 and 86 and 87 and 88. <laughs> right? Yeah, he won like five out of six years or something in a row, didn't he? Yeah. Jack Clark, Gary Gaetti. Dempsey, Jody Davis. And we'll see this bog. Star pack. Not bad at all. So who haven't we seen? Uh, that's that's who we need to see. Is uh, um, have we see, we haven't seen the standard Ripken? We haven't seen Ryan, Brett and we haven't Saberhagen. seen. Is there a Brett Saberhagen? Um, yeah, his rookie. It oh, there's his a rookie, number right? Eric, number three. Look at that. We got to find out who wore number three. Oh, yeah, you're right. I missed it. I, I bet it's just absolutely random. I bet number three is absolutely nobody. It's probably the bad boy. I bet the, it's, it's just someone at Fleer. It just started, should we put numbers on or not? And then, you know, a memo got circulated and someone already went through with numbers on. Domingo Ramos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't. This one, Tommy John. Oh. Aussie. You know what? Almost every one I've seen of this is left to right uh, of the Aussie Smith. Is that in Dodger is... Stadium? Um, Looks it like might it might be. Yeah, it might be. I'm going to sleeve that. Um, that actually has some value in a PSA 10, believe it or not. I think because almost every one is left to right. Wait, go um, back to that Steve Bedrosian for a second. Is he like playing like shortstop there? Like what's going on? On the mound, right. Oh, is he on the mound? <laughs> <laughs> he's on the mound, I think. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Is, this, is that a morning stretch? I mean, yeah. Is it just taking batting practice? I mean, like, uh, I don't know. Um, it's it's definitely, a, it's definitely a weird pose. He's very yeah. comfortable. Or he's just staring down the pitch they didn't get, you know. But it's it looks like he has, like, batting practice, uh, you know. That was, like, the on. early going of his beard. Because, that like, I remember his beard became, like, a thing for him. Oh, there's nice Joe Carter behind there. Look at the uh, – McDonald's. Got through the, yeah, that's not supposed to be on there for sure. And that is a nice Joe Carter. Little, little uh, right. To, oh, look at that. That's a Ooh, nice card. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's Pretty good. Nice that's, pack here. Looks nice. That's a nice card. Uh, Tony Gwynn's such a great player. But uh, speaking of, you know, we were just talking about Boggs. Gwynn did the same thing in the National League. Like, like five out of six years in a row, like batting yeah. title. Look at that row. He got all the batting titles, guys. I, I, shouldn't Joe Carter be in the conversation for something? I mean, isn't he better than people remember? He had a lot of 100 RBI seasons. He had clutch hits. He won World Series. I don't know. Isn't he better than – Harold Baines is getting – isn't Joe Carter, like, on the borderline of the Harold Baines? Especially with, uh, you know, when you factor in, like, the, the clutchness of how he played, you know. Some of the biggest hits, you know. Ever. Um, history. Certainly for the Blue Jays. TP Martinez. Sweet Sweet music. Famous uh, play by play guy now. Or color man. Look at those guys. dad. Is it really? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> how many, how many, how many uh, baseball cards? have the guy with no hat on that's I mean, and, people, and like super dark sunglasses if people i mean i might have to pay, remember this card to post for like a weekend vibes i mean but if, if people don't think drugs were rampant in the 80s <laughs> look at that picture he stayed out way too late as a matter of fact it may still be the night before yeah um, for him you know in the mid 80s for sure you know he, he's a pitcher so you know he's like i'm not on again till thursday so let's party yeah that's unbelievable like, hey, you know, Fleer's going to be there tomorrow taking our picture. Batting pro- oh, okay. <laughs> that's, pr- that's pretty funny. Steve Dave. Henderson. And I don't remember these guys. You John Jelt. Russell, Steve Jeltz. There's Charlie Huff. Bob Nepper. And kind of a, kind of a dull pack, but um, we got to see Steve Trout, though. <laughs> Chuck card, that's pretty awesome. That's epic. <laughs> I love it. Okay, here we, we got go. Another number. So there are numbers. There's numbers on some of them, but I don't think they mean that. There's like a lottery. All the numbers. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Alan Trammell. Pretty cool uh, card, actually. He's, uh, I don't know, if Wick was, was Vukovic trying to steal? I hope not. They must have caught him. Uh, it's like a double play, maybe. Oh, no, look, he looks like he's going to apply a tag. Yeah, he's going to, he's going to apply a tag. He got, he got caught in the middle or straying too far or something like that. It's kind of a, a, a John Franco. Cool card. Gidry. Nice. Wow, look at that. Uh, I'm going to sleeve that. Oh, it's a little low. I was looking at the left to right. The left to right is perfect. It's just a little low. I'm going to sleeve that anyway, though. Strawberry, hey. we hit it. We didn't hit it for Danny R, but we hit it anyway. The Griffey yeah, Jr. pose. A little off cut. And we haven't seen this card yet. It's kind of nice when you start seeing cards you haven't seen, though. So at least, like, the collation is pretty darn good in this box, you have to say. We haven't seen a lot of repeats or anything like that. Um, I'd like to see a repeat of that uh, Kirby. <laughs> Michael R. Will, Michael H. will you not you got two, protest. You got two Vukovic's in the same pack. You got the real Vukovic, and then you got him sliding into Trammel. Oh, that's right. That was the guy That's the, who was sliding into Trammel. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Come on, oh, man. That's, that's a lottery. That paid 10 to 1. Uh, we got, I know, it's the poor lotto, the poor guys. These guys are thinking, because when I make the lotto, I'm like, well, let's make it where it's doable. And um, I always I think like, Bukovic is in the same <laughs> right. But really, I should have done, it, it would have made more sense to do the combo cards. Um, that, that's what I should have done the lotto. And we would have had one guy that hit it for sure. This road turned out to be pretty star studded and we're only halfway through. Not bad. Not bad. And like I said, the best thing is that we're not seeing the same cards over and over again. Um, Robin Yao on the back. Hall of Famer. Terry Pendleton. Is that a rookie card? I think it is. He's got a, uh, he's got a watermark right between his eyes. Look at that. Too bad. It's not perfect, perfectly cut, but um, it is a rookie yep. card. 1990-something uh, MVP of the National League one year, I remember. Yeah, he, um, he had the batting title that year, and the Braves won the pennant, I think, um, if I remember right. Or they, there's Alvin Davis. That's a rookie, maybe? I think it is, actually. Um, that's, he's one of those guys that people are like, oh. But, I mean, he had, like, two Alvin or three Davis. good seasons. Alvin Davis and Phil Bradley were, like, the uh, outfield for the Mariners. A couple stars. Yeah, absolutely. Henderson, check it out. That's, that's a nice card. It is nice. I mean... What what better card to have of, of Ricky um, than that 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 photo? Um, Chicago Cubs, uh, what was that? Division champs. They got their own card for that. Spoiler they, Foley. They didn't win the World Series that year. No, they didn't. <laughs> they definitely didn't. But they, they they I guess they got close enough where they got their own you know superstar card. Um, just just for getting that close. Uh, Tim Foley is a is an interesting guy. He was at a, a I tell a, a, a Tim Foley story in one of my other breaks. He was at a batting camp that I went to, and he's like so high energy. Like I was like warming up in the cage, and he's just walking by, he comes running in, rips the bat out of my hand. Let me show you how to swing, and he's like whiffing the bat through the air. You can like hear the bat like rip through the air and just crack into the ball, right? and then like takes like three swings, throws the bat back to me, and just keeps walking. I'm like, what just happened? And then I, yeah, I, I looked him up on in Google, and his nickname is Crazy Horse. And I'm like, yes, that is exactly the guy that I remember from the batting camp, Crazy Horse. <laughs> the funny thing about that story is like, if, uh, that's awesome. If you look, if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, uh, even like the worst common player that you could possibly get in a pack, that guy was the best player in his hometown, like ever. Right. You know what I mean, like yeah, Tim absolutely. Foley. A lot of people haven't heard of can like is probably the best player in the history of his hometown. Absolutely, and, and I'm telling you, like I, I was like in shock of like watching him swing the bat, and you know, probably I was probably like you know 12 years old or something. And but it was like you get to see like okay, that's what it's supposed to look like when the bat for bat speed because that that's what he yelled. He yelled bat speed. It's got it's all about bat speed and like ripped the bat and tried to show me. And I'm like okay, I got it, gotcha. Um, but yeah, <laughs> crack. And we got number 14 for the Phillies. So um, there's our fifth number if you want to play the, the pick six. I tell you what, Roger M should rewatch his stack. And if there's numbers on those, um, you should play those, Roger M. 
What what number was uh, that Philly? Fourteen. Fourteen was uh, John Wackenfuss. <laughs> yeah, not Mike Schmidt or you know some. I've never even heard of John Wackenfuss, but there's his sticker. Murph. And, yeah, Murph. Is he going to get in the Hall of Fame? He's yeah, got probably. so many fans. He's so heavily. That's the coolest guy in baseball, right there, Dennis Boyd. Yeah, it's, it's right right before he got his nickname on the cards. Everything yeah. after this doesn't say Dennis. Uh, um, actually, I, think I think that Tops Dan does. Murphy, by the way, what's that? I think Murphy gets in the Hall of Fame. I think so too. Um, and um, oh, look at that. Buckner, the ball going right through his legs. Oh, wow. that is. That is. I mean, wow. this is the year. This the year before. This that's is prophetic. That's an, omen. that's an omen. You should, yeah. you should just leave that. Oh my God! It's it's between. I mean, it's a little different, but still, he is going down for the ball, and it's going like it's going right between his legs. That's unbelievable. That's hilarious. I don't remember that. I don't remember seeing this uh, before. I can tell uh, you, uh, there's like a 1990 Bill Buckner upper deck card where they like played a prank on him. Like, just Google it. Oh, but that's terrible. Ron Kittle, Kim, Kim McReynolds. Yeah, that might be a. Oh no, 84 would have been his rookie. Yeah, he's a pretty good slugger for a while. Um, Chili Davis, also. T- really bad off-cut, but uh, too bad. Chili Davis, Dale Murphy. Go to, does that Mickey Hatcher, isn't he famous for like having like big oversized gloves in his clear carts? I'm not sure. Did he have one there? Mickey Hatcher. Like in 86 Fleer, and he showed up again in 89 or something. He, look at that glove. I, but, there's, it is, but the size of his forearm. Each glove, though, that's like the size of his head in the next... <laughs> In 86. We'll have to watch for that. All right. Three packs left for Michael H. Dale Murphy with the Billy Ripken pose. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it in the upper deck? He's left over right or whatever, right? Oh, uh, reverse negative. Yeah, the reverse negative. Uh, so he's got the, the left-handed stance. Yeah. Which I think you can only hit that, ah, Sean Watson. Doug Flynn. That's the guy whose sticker we got earlier. Is it? <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't even have a number on his shirt or anything. No. You can see. Thomas Andrew. Garcia. They burned his, uh, burned his oh. uniform after a loss. That's a nice one. Nice. We hit that? We've hit most of the... Um, uh-oh. I lost... Um, oh, that's and Willie McGee? That's a rookie. What is? Is that Willie McGee a rookie? Is it? I don't know. No, no. Um, I think it would have been 83 would have been his rookie, I think. Um, 84, maybe? Um, I lost. My computer went idle. There we go. Lost a little bit of light. All right, so what, what card haven't we seen? Um, this stack of Hall of Famers and, like, Hall of Very Gooders that this guy has. It really is. I mean, he's, he's, he's just he's drip-drabbing us with, with singles and walks. Um, but, I mean... He like, could open up, like, a nice dollar table at a card show. <laughs> right? Yeah, and we get another one. Uh, it's, rookie card. It's, that is... Uh, it's going to be miscut. At least on the back, it's miscut. It's, maybe it has some better visibility from the front, but... The Bulldog. Who's that? Uh, Oral Hertzheiser. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. Frank White. Yeah, I watched a um, uh, a clip of uh, Mookie Wilson. Mookie Wilson, rare shot of him not smiling. Right, he's always happy, and all of even when he's like playing, he's happy. Um, we haven't seen that card before. Four thousand. It does, doesn't seem right seeing him in an Expos uniform now. No, which right? also is strange. Is like I swear we pulled a Pete Rose, and he was in not an He wasn't in Expo in his other card. You're right. The, it's on the the cover of the box. It's weird. That, the, yeah, that is weird. Um, that's that's a point of trivia, maybe. Uh, two different teams in the same set in this, with different uniforms in yeah, the same set? That's, that's rare. Many, yeah, how many times does that happen? All-star winning battery. Seems like Clear had like a deal with the Blue Jays and Expos for like extra pictures. <laughs> <laughs> right? And that's the Expos, yeah. Expos got a little... Uh, it's not ba- as bad as the back, but yeah, it's a little off-center. Um, Yeah, Expos and Blue Jays definitely got featured in this set quite a bit. All right, last pack for, for Michael H. Um, good luck, Michael H. Oh, who you hit the uh, pocket uh, 
Clemens combo. It could happen. Here's Number 15. 15. I'll find out. <laughs> Eventually, it's got to be someone that we've heard of. Go Madlock. Jose Cruz. Keith. And we haven't seen this one before. 1984 is two perfect games and one no hitter. Jack Morris and Mike Witt had the no hitter, I think. And was it Palmer had the other perfect game? Mike Witt, Morris, and David Palmer. Oh, a, pitched a five inning perfect game. Well, that doesn't really count, does it? It's called because of rain. Oh, because, because, so that does count then. I mean, with an asterisk, I guess. I guess that's why they're saying it. I don't know. <laughs> Mike Stanton, not to be confused with Giancarlo Stanton. <laughs> right. Lou Whitaker. Yeah, sweet Lou. Sweet Lou. A lot of people think if Trammell got in, he should get in, huh? Yeah, definitely. What's going on with his chin there? Um, Tom Hume. Can you see that? Early, uh, early candidate for lens crafters. Look at that. He's got the super cleft chin. It's almost like he's got buttocks. It, 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 I mean, it looks like almost like he just like, like he's a vampire and he just fed possibly, for his evening meal. Possibly, possibly having an allergic reaction to something. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway. That looks like he's got like, like he fell off like an exercise bike in the gym. What is happening there? Someone socked him in the jaw? I mean, something bad is happening with his mouth right there. I can't believe. Maybe that's a printing error. I'm looking at it in person, too, though, and it, it just I looks like. That looked at, Tom. <laughs> he doesn't seem bothered by it. So he seems Although it very... does look like a bit of like a hidden cross. It might be, actually. I don't know. I have to watch for that. Maybe that's maybe that's one of those things that um, uh, isn't there another uh, card that has like the has the color centering on it. It's a famous card, actually. Um, there's a rookie where it, it's worth more if you have the little color centering for the sheet on it. Um, I can't remember what it is. It's like a '90s card. Like a Roger uh, Clemens, there's like a Roger Clemens '86 tops with like a blue dot on it that I know of. Yeah. So. That's that's a pretty good box, man. You hit every possible card you could hit. Yeah, we didn't hit the um, we so we didn't hit the lotto, but we hit. I mean, we hit just about every card. Let's do a quick recap just to go through. I mean, this like I said, he he hit he just killed it. He Pete Rose us to death this last uh, last stack. Lots of stars, Hall of Famers. Yeah, ridiculous. Nice, there was, Michael there was H. Hall of Famers also that you didn't even sleeve. The, yeah, I know. I didn't sleep them all. And what's funny is, like, you know, uh, like sometimes I, I blow by, like, you know, Hall of Famers that, you know, just didn't connect with me. And then I'll sleeve, like, you know, Corey Snyder for someone. And I, I know some of the guys. I'm a big Corey Snyder guy, by the way. I don't know. If I you know, know that. And, and it's hard to explain to people that if you weren't a fan in, like, you know, 86, 87, 88, you're like, Corey Snyder, who's that? Why do you have, why are you, it, but he was such a high action player. At that time, like uh, that 84, uh, the '84 Olympic team had Will Clark, Corey Snyder, and Mark McGuire on it. Yes, um, the uh, um, the Corey Snyder card actually is um, uh, in a PSA ten. Actually, is starting to creep up in value. Believe it or not, that's so um, far. That's the only PSA ten card I own. Is that card? When I did the '85 tops break, I looked at PSA 10s just to kind of, you know, you know, rally the troops and give everyone like kind of an overview. And it was like, there were like two completed sales and one was 70 and one was like 85. And it was over like a lot of other players that you'd think like, and I'm like, yeah, nice. it made me feel good anyway. Corey Snyder's getting some love. Um, so here's our, that, here's our double card. That was cool. The same pack. That is really cool. Up Sean Mosby. Was it Fleer that did those like baseball posters? There was like a little like foldable and they kind of, you know what I'm talking about? It was like Don Ross or Fleer. Was it in the packs? Possibly, but it's like early 80s, like 82 or something. 
It might have been before I opened cards. I don't remember that. All right. Well, if I think of it, I'll let you know. Look at that Tartable. Tartable's pretty nice. Pretty nicely centered, too. Nice job. And then here's the other half of the Holland. <laughs> so goofy. Uh, Schmidt, which is really nice condition, except for the little black line. We have a little on the, the tunnel, too. Thankfully, that, that, was, that was just a couple packs with that. And we got to hit. We Actually, did we hit the Ripken standard card? I think that's the only one we didn't hit. I don't know. I think we hit Ripken in action. So I don't even think we hit the lotto for the entire box. But next break, I'm going to do a lotto we can actually hit. Like, you know, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll think of one for maybe like the upper deck one. Um, uh, you know, um, a lotto that's actually possible. And then um, Roger M. Jeez, Roger M's in the Hall of Fame of 85 clear. I mean, look at, look at this. The pucket is really nice. The cut it might might not be perfect on the left, but um, the Gooden is pretty nice. Um, Listen, if you were going to start an eighty-five clear collection perfect. for forty dollars, you look. This is a steal. <laughs> you have all the key cards you possibly want. And I got to tell you, man, this one I think might be gradable. Um, sorry, I keep holding it. Up. I'm, I'm looking at it in person. That might be gradable, man. Um, that is, uh, that's really nice. Let's see the and back. Nice card, it man. Might, it might not be perfect left to right, but it is close. It is close. See the front, it looks de dead center. Um, but uh, on the back, it looks just shifted maybe 60, 40 on the back. But um, I still think, you know, hey, if it gets slabbed as a, as a nine, it's still a really nice, valuable card. Um, I think it's a nine all day uh, at the minimum. So Roger M is the hero of this, of this break. But uh, um, this was pretty fun. Um, awesome. Kind of sad that when the, when the box is over, we want to keep breaking. <laughs> Miami Dolphins almost just scored like their first touchdown of the year, but I don't think it happened. Did it? They're, they're losing to the Redskins. Yeah, that's terrible. Currently. Oh my gosh! All right, well, um, there's uh, well, one of them has to win because they're both zero and four. So yes, there can only be one. <laughs> well, they could tie though. <laughs> this this was uh, this was a lot of fun, man, and I'm I'm down to do it whenever you want. Um, I've I've actually watched your videos prior to doing this, so this is pretty cool to actually get to be a part of one. Uh, I would say Roger. M owes me at least a thank you for the mojo that I brought him on that. <laughs> you brought project. him some serious luck. Um, the whole box, actually. This is an unauthenticated box. And you saw it looks it's a little rough around the edges. I mean, this box got knocked around a little bit. But you know what? I kind of like I, I think I'm just kind of going for that. Like it, I, I, we've spent some money on some baseball card exchange wrapped boxes that were a little more expensive, but they weren't from a seal case. And you don't always hit everything and you pay a lot more money. Like I kind of like these like value boxes that are just kind of look like they've just been in someone's closet and look how right, cool the sides are though. Like I don't remember that. Like look, there's just a pocket right there on the side of the box. Yeah, I, 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 it, it, it is weird that, 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 that well they had him in their in their update set. Right. So um uh so I guess still like I don't remember seeing like a box of cards with a cool look. That design is awesome. I would have voted that best in show in Baseball Card Magazine 1985. I wonder if they won again. Look at that. Who's there? Someone throwing down a bunt. Tom Brookins, is that? Bill Gullickson and Tom Brookins, yes. And then Tony Glenn. And then it's the year before they did anything on the bottom. Uh, well, actually, actually, Fleer never did it. It was Don Russ and Topps started doing that. Awesome, man. Really awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for including me in this. Absolutely. Hey, Stu, we'll talk soon, okay? Yes, we will. And uh, for people who haven't uh, already checked out Jack of All Trades, on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, follow us there. And uh, I love talking about anything wax related. So let's uh, let's do it. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Have a good uh, have a good week. You too. I'll talk to you soon, Sue. Thanks. Bye. Care.